Greetings aspirants, welcome to one another special video brought to you by Shankar AIS Academy. I don't have to tell you what the video is about because you have already read it in the title. But still, in this video we are going to see the prelims questions of the year 2022 which reflected from the Hindu News Analysis Program of Shankar AIS Academy. See the questions that we are going to discuss today is based on set A and the answers that we are going to discuss today is based on Shankar AIS Academy's answer key. So, in some of the cases, we were able to arrive at the answer directly based on our Hindu News Analysis program and in some other cases, we were able to improve the probability. For example, we were able to improve the probability uh, to 50-50 chance of getting a question right. And having said that, we are delighted to find out around 40 questions reflected from our Hindu News Analysis program. I suggest the aspirants to watch the video fully and without any further ado, let's see the questions. Now we are going to take third question. See the question is about Indian economy. And since it is a three statement question, we can try applying elimination techniques. In this, let us start with statement one. It is given us if inflation is too high, RBI is likely to buy government securities. See, if you had watched our Hindu News analysis on 19th March 2021, in that analysis we had clearly seen what happens while RBI is selling a bond and while buying a bond. In that analysis, we saw that by selling bonds, RBI controls the surplus money flow in the economy and thus reducing inflation. And by buying bonds from the government, RBI injects money into the economy and thus it increases the liquidity in the economy. So from this information, we can conclude that statement 1 is incorrect. See, like I said earlier, it is a three statement question. Now let us see whether by elimination technique can we arrive at the right answer. Yes, we can. Look at the options here. We found out that statement 1 is incorrect. And option B is the only option which does not have statement 1 in it. So the correct answer here is option B, 2 and 3 only. So if you had watched 19th March 2021 analysis, you would have arrived at the right answer. And after this, we are going to see sixth question. Take a look at this question. It is about foreign owned e-commerce firms. See, it is a two statement question. Let us start with statement one. See, in our 7th December 2019 analysis, we saw that the foreign e-commerce firms cannot sell their own goods in addition to offering their platforms as marketplace. So from this information, we can say that statement one is incorrect. Now coming to statement 2, see on the very same day we had mentioned that there is limitation for how much an e-commerce firm can own. See it is as per 2018 notification. In that notification it is mentioned that an inventory of a vendor having more than 25% of purchase from marketplace entities or from its group companies will be deemed to be controlled. And while discussing that we saw the example of Amazon also. From this we can say that statement 2 is correct and the question has asked for the correct statement so you can easily arrive at the correct answer which is option B. And after this let us take question number 18. See it talks about writs in the Indian constitution. It is a three statement question and in these three statements two writs are given. One is mandamus and the other one is Q Oranto. See on our June 9, 2020 analysis we have discussed in detail about all of the writs. In that analysis we had clearly mentioned information about when can a mandamus be declared. See it can be issued by Supreme Court to any public official to perform the official duties. And the writ is issued if a public official refused or failed to perform the official duty. So from this we can easily understand that mandamus lie against any government company. And in that analysis we also saw that it cannot be issued against a president, private bodies and governors. So with this information you can easily eliminate options containing statement 2. Because statement 2 says that it cannot be issued against a government company. So statement 2 is incorrect. Since it is a three statement question, we are going to try elimination technique here. So we are going to eliminate options which have statement 2 in it. So the correct answer here is option C. So from this single analysis, we are able to answer this question. Moving on, let us see about question 26. See, it asks what the term Levant means. 
See, we have discussed about Levant in our 11th September 2021 discussion. On that day, we saw that there is a terror group called the Islamic State of Levant, and it existed in the Levant countries. And we also clearly saw that Levant country denotes a vast geographical region situated in the eastern Mediterranean. From this itself, it is clear that the correct answer is option A. So those who have listened to this discussion could have easily attempted this question and arrived at the correct answer. Now moving on to the next question. See, it is twenty seventh question of set A, and it is about Afghanistan. The question asks about the bordering countries of Afghanistan. We have seen its borders many a times in our discussion. For example, take this practice question that was discussed on eighteenth May two thousand twenty. Here clearly we have stated the bordering countries. And what are the bordering countries of Afghanistan? It includes Pakistan, India, China, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Iran. And by this knowledge, you can arrive at the correct answer, which is option C here. Now let us take this next question, which is thirty-fifth question. See, this is about qubit. Qubit is short form for quantum bits. If you take our sixth December two thousand twenty analysis while discussing about quantum computing, we saw that quantum computing uses quantum bits or qubits. So from this we can easily arrive at the correct answer, which is option B. See, it is fairly a direct question. Now moving on to thirty seventh question, which is on biofilm. See. On ninth January two thousand twenty two, we had a detailed discussion about biofilms. Actually, we have covered all points mentioned in this question. While beginning the article discussion itself, we saw that biofilms use ranges from medicine to food industry, and later on we saw how biofilm is advantageous in the food industry. So it is clear that it has various uses around food. From this, we can say that statement two is correct. Then in that analysis, we saw that they have resistance to antibiotics. and they can show 1500 times more resistance to antibiotics as compared to free floating bacteria and this makes statement 3 as correct and after that we also saw biofilms can also cause severe infections in hospitalized patients as they can grow on implanted medical devices such as catheters and pacemakers so from this it is clear that statement 1 is also correct So we can easily arrive at the correct answer, which is option D. See, what does this mean? This means that a single discussion on a particular topic has helped us to answer this question. Now let us move on to the next question, which is fifty-eighth question. It talks about Miyawaki method. See, just a few days before the prelims examination, specifically on May thirty-first, two thousand twenty-two analysis, we discussed about this topic. In that discussion we have mentioned that the aim of Miyawaki method is to grow urban forest and expand the green cover by afforestation. So through this it has revolutionized the concept of urban afforestation as the backyards have been turned into mini forest. So if you have watched this analysis there is no doubt for you you can easily arrive at the correct answer which is option C. Now after this let us take the 63rd question. See the question talks about credit rating agencies in India. See it is a three statement question so we have to apply elimination technique here. Go through all of the statements once and take the easiest one and find out whether that statement is correct or not. So here I'm going to take statement 1. It says that in India credit rating agencies are regulated by Reserve Bank of India. See if you remember our discussion on 17th October 2020 we can easily say that statement 1 is incorrect it is because in that discussion we mentioned that credit rating agencies in India are regulated by Securities and Exchange Board of India that is SEBI and like i said this is a three statement question and we have to try applying elimination technique if you find out that statement 1 is incorrect then you have to check the options and which option does not have statement 1 in it it is option b it is quite straight forward right here for this question you have to just remember only one fact credit rating agencies are regulated by sebi not rbi if you know this then you can easily arrive at the correct answer 
and we have discussed this crucial fact on our 17th October 2020 analysis. Now after this let us take 68th question. See we have seen the statement maintaining price stability by controlling inflation many a times. For example take this discussion on 3rd April 2021. There, while discussing about inflation targeting, the faculty mentioned that monetary policy strategy is the one which is used by central banks for maintaining inflation at a certain level or within a specific range. We also saw that the primary objective of monetary policy is to maintain price stability while keeping in mind the objective of growth. And this is done by rising or lowering the interest rates based on above target or below target inflation. See usually the central banks follow a policy of keeping inflation sufficiently low. So from this it is very clear that in a monetary policy strategy to maintain price stability the central banks keep the inflation low. Therefore the answer should be central bank. See the options here. The options do not have the term central bank, rather they have the name of India's central bank which is Reserve Bank of India and thus if you had gone through 3rd April 2021 analysis you would have marked the option D. Now after this let us go to 75th question. See it talks about the body which is constituted under Environment Protection Act 1986. What are all the bodies given in the options? Central Water Commission, Central Groundwater Board, Central Groundwater Authority and National Water Development Agency. It is a straightforward question. On our 5th May 2021 analysis, we had discussed about Central Groundwater Authority. And in that analysis, we had seen that it is constituted under Section 3 of Environment Protection Act 1986. And if you had watched the analysis, it would have been easy for you to arrive at the correct answer which is option C, Central Groundwater Authority. And after this, let us take the question 80. See, the question is about greenwashing and the options given are regarding the definition of greenwashing. See, on our October 17, 2019 analysis, we saw the difference between green and greenwash. See, greenwash is opposite to green. Generally, we say green for environmentally friendly actions. But greenwash refers to the process of conveying the false information to manipulate people to think that it is actually environment friendly. The word is used when a company or a government is against the environment but provides misinformation to develop a green environmental image. So, if you had watched this analysis, then you know that option A here is the correct answer. Option A says that conveying a false impression that a company's products are eco-friendly and environmentally sound. So this is the more apt answer here. And after this, now let us see question number 85. See this statement is about UN clause. See we have seen a lot of times about UN clause in our daily news analysis. For example, on December 14, 2021, we saw about some of the features of UN clause. In that discussion, we saw that a coastal state has the right to establish the breadth of its territorial sea up to a limit not exceeding 12 nautical miles. And it is measured from baseline determined in accordance with the convention. So from this we know that the territorial sea limit is up to 12 nautical miles. And we also saw that the coastal state has full sovereignty in the region. So the state is free to set laws and regulate the use of any resource in this region. And from this information you can come to the conclusion that statement 1 is correct. And you can eliminate option B because it does not have statement 1 in it. And on the very same day, we also saw that the coastal state has sovereignty over the airspace above the territorial sea, the seabed and subsoil beneath the territorial sea. And most importantly, we saw that the foreign vessels in the region are given the right of innocent passage. So second statement here is also correct. Now we are left with statement 3. If we find whether the statement is right or not, then we can accurately arrive at the answer. See again on December 14, 2021 analysis, we saw that the limit of exclusive economic zone is 200 nautical miles from the baseline. 
So from this, you can come to the conclusion that statement three is also correct. After knowing that all the three statements are correct, you can easily arrive at the correct answer, which is option D. See, we have seen the exact points on 13th April 2021 analysis as well. So aspirants, give it a glance. And after this, we are going to take 86th question. In this question, few facts about Senkaku Islands are given. You have to find which of the options given are correct. See, we have discussed about the issue regarding Senkaku Islands several times in our daily news analysis. For example, on June 23, 2020 analysis, we saw exclusively about Senkaku Islands. In that discussion, we saw that Senkaku Islands are a group of uninhabited islands in the East China Sea. They are located east of mainland China, northeast of Taiwan, west of Ishigaki city of Japan. But this territory is disputed between Japan, Taiwan, and China. So from this, you can accurately say that the correct answer is option B only. See, other options here are totally irrelevant to the Senkaku Islands. It is not an artificial island, and America did not set up any permanent military base there to help Taiwan. And option D is also irrelevant. So, if you had seen June twenty three two thousand twenty analysis, you would have easily answered this question. And after this, let us take ninety fifth question. See, this question is about Ramanuja. The question asks which of the following statements correctly represents the teachings of Ramanuja. See the correct answer here is option A. The best means of salvation was devotion. We have discussed about this in our daily news analysis on Feb 11, 2022. See since Ramanuja made news several times, the question was asked. And if you have watched February 11, 2022 analysis, you could have accurately answered this question because it is kind of a straightforward question. Now let us take this 97th question. See, the question is about lymphocytes, B cells, and T cells. That is, B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. See, we had a detailed discussion about this on. 16th August 2020 see there we clearly saw that these lymphocytes they are a part of the immune system also we saw that b cells are responsible for producing army of proteins called as antibodies and these antibodies are used to attack invading bacteria viruses and toxins now we know that bacteria and viruses are nothing but pathogens right from this we know that option d in the question is correct Option D says that they protect the body from diseases caused by pathogens and this is true for B cells. Now coming to T cells we saw that they have the potential to recognize diverse antigens from pathogens, tumors and the environment. And through immunological memory T cells respond more rapidly and effectively to pathogens that have been encountered. This simply means that T cells also protect the body from pathogens. So the option D is also true for T cells. Therefore, the correct answer here is option D. So based on the analysis on 16th August 2020, you can easily arrive at the correct answer. Now let us take up this next question, which is question number hundred. See, it is about acid rain. It asks the causes of acid rain. See, we may have dealt with this topic separately, but during several discussions, whenever we have mentioned about acid rain, the causes of acid rain were also mentioned. For example, take this discussion on twenty seventh October two thousand twenty one. There, we were seeing about a report on thermal power plants. In that discussion itself, the faculty was covering the harmful impacts of sulfur dioxide. There, it was mentioned that acid rain results when sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are emitted into the atmosphere and transported by wind and air currents. See, the sulfur dioxide and the nitrogen oxides react with water, oxygen, and other chemicals to form sulfuric acid and nitric acids. These then mix with water and other materials before falling to ground as acid rain. So it is very clear that sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides are essential for acid rain. So we have sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides in statement two and four. If we find out this, we can easily arrive at the answer, which is option B. Here, fortunately, other options do not have two and four together. So no need for any doubt here. You can choose the correct answer with confidence. 
Now let us take 73rd question. See the question is about 5th schedule of constitution. More specifically, it is about the consequences when a particular area is brought under 5th schedule of the constitution. See here, the answer for this question can be arrived quite directly. On our 28th May 2022 analysis, we had discussed about some previous questions. And in that, a similar question was discussed which spoke about the declaration of transfer of tribal land to private parties for mining as null and void. So from this we can infer that if a particular area is brought under 5th schedule, then it prevents the transfer of land of tribal people to non-tribal people. Like I said, it is a very direct question. But you have to know about the 5th schedule and the consequences of bringing an area under 5th schedule. And we discussed this on 28th May 2022 analysis. Now, let us take this next question which is question number 20. See, it is about Deputy Speaker of Lok Sabha. See, in our 11th September 2020 analysis, we discussed about Deputy Speaker. And in that, we clearly mentioned the date of election of Deputy Speaker is fixed by Speaker. And from this, we can conclude that statement 1 is correct. Using elimination technique, we can eliminate options C and D because they do not have statement 1 in them. Look at the options A and B. Both the options have statement 1 and 3 in them. So, what is the odd one out? It is option B which has statement 2 extra. So, here we have to check only statement 2. Here again in the 11th September 2020 analysis, we saw that from 11th Lok Sabha, there had been a consensus that the speaker comes from the ruling party and the post of deputy speaker goes to the main opposition party of the house. And this was not the case up to 10th Lok Sabha, where both the speaker and the deputy speaker come from the ruling party. So what is the second statement here? It says that there is a mandatory provision that election of candidate as deputy speaker of Lok Sabha shall be from either the principal opposition party or the ruling party. See, in the analysis, we saw it is based on consensus. So, there is no mandatory provision here and this makes statement 2 incorrect. And if you remember this, then you can easily arrive at the answer which is option A, 1 and 3 only. And after this, we are going to take question number 13. See, it is about constitutional amendment. It is a three statement question, hence we are going to apply elimination technique. Let us take statement 1. On 11th December 2019 Hindu News Analysis, we had clearly discussed that any bill amending the constitution does not require the prior permission of the president. But in the question, it is given that a bill amending the constitution requires prior recommendation of the president. So with the information from the analysis, we can conclude that statement 1 is incorrect. See, since it is a three statement question, if we find out that statement 1 is incorrect, we can easily arrive at the correct answer which is option B. We have arrived at the correct answer here in this question using elimination technique. And regarding the other two statements, we have discussed that also in the 11th December 2019 analysis. We clearly discussed that the president has an obligation to give assent to any constitutional amendment bill and constitutional amendment bill must be passed by both the houses separately with the special majority. And there is no provision for joint sitting. And if you had watched this analysis, which is 11th December 2019 analysis, you would have been able to answer the question correctly. Now let us take the next question, which is question number 17. See, this question is about Attorney General. We have seen this topic many times. Now, if you take May 1st, 2021 discussion, we saw that Attorney General's term of office is not fixed by constitution. Also, there is no mention about the procedure and grounds for his removal. And the Attorney General holds office during the pleasure of President. He may also quit his office by submitting his resignation to the President. Additionally, the faculty also mentioned that conventionally, Attorney General resigns when the government resigns or is replaced. This is because Attorney General is appointed based on the advice of Council of Ministers headed by Prime Minister. So it is very clear that even though Attorney General resigns when the government resigns, it is not done as per constitution, rather it is a convention. So here statement 2 is incorrect. Now coming to the first statement, while seeing about Attorney General, the faculty mentioned that under Article 88, Attorney General takes part in the 
proceedings of both the houses of the parliament or their joint sitting and any committee of the parliament of which he may be named as a member here take part is nothing but participating that means statement 1 is true for attorney general and we have seen this fact in other discussions as well for example we have seen this on 28th february 2021 analysis and 1st july 2020 analysis see in these discussions we have displayed the article 88 and has told that along with the attorney general the ministers also hold the power to take part in the proceedings of both the houses of the parliament or their joint sitting and any committee of the parliament of which he may be named as member so what is the catch word here statement 1 says that attorney general and solicitor general of india are the only officers of the government who are allowed to participate in the meetings of the parliament here the catch word is only from the analysis we saw that even ministers have the power to take part in the proceedings so from this information we can conclude that statement 1 is incorrect as both the statements are incorrect the correct answer is option b neither one nor two So as far as question 17 is concerned if you had watched May 1st 2021 analysis you would have been able to answer this question Now let us take this 11th question see it is about contempt of courts see it is a multiple statement question so we can try applying elimination technique here read all the statements once here i'm going to start with statement 3 because it is very simple it says constitution of india defines civil contempt and criminal contempt see in our hindu news analysis dated august 2 2020 we had clearly discussed that contempt of court is well defined in contempt of court act 1971 and not in constitution see here we have talked about article 129 and article 215 also see in these two articles of the constitution the term contempt of court is mentioned but the definition of it is not given in these two articles so with this information we can come to the conclusion that statement 3 is incorrect so by elimination technique we can eliminate two options here what are those options they are option c and option d now we have option a and b in these two options the common statements given are 1 and 2 so we know both 1 and 2 statements should be in the answer now we have to find out whether statement 4 is right or not the statement 4 states that in india the parliament is vested with the powers to make laws on contempt of court and if you see august 17 2020 hindu news analysis in that analysis we discussed that the laws regarding contempt of court are made by parliament and this is given in article 142 so from this information we can conclude that statement 4 is correct if we find out statement 4 is correct then the correct option here is option b so if you had watched these two discussions then you would have arrived at the correct answer and after this let us take question number 16 see this is about anti defection law it is a two statement question and we are going to go through both of the statements one by one the first statement says that nominated legislator cannot join any political party within 6 months see on our march 15 2021 analysis we had discussed about anti defection law and in that discussion we mentioned that when a nominated legislator is not belonging to any party then he or she can join a party within 6 months and if they join any political party after 6 months then they will be disqualified so with this information we can come to the conclusion that statement 1 is incorrect because in the statement it is given that a nominated member cannot join political party within 6 months but that is not true if we find out that statement 1 is incorrect then we can eliminate options a and c Now coming to second statement it says that the law does not provide any time frame within which the presiding officer has to decide a defection case see on our november 28 2020 analysis we discussed that in 10th schedule there is no time limit for the speaker in deciding cases relating to anti defection so with this information we can conclude that statement 2 is correct and if you had watched both of these analysis you would have also arrived at the correct answer which is option b 2 only
Now let us move on to the next question which is 39th question. See we have discussed about COVID-19 vaccines and vaccine groups many a times in our discussions. If you take our December 27th 2021 discussion, it was clearly mentioned that COVID shield is adenovirus based vaccine and we also saw that mRNA vaccines include Pfizer BioNTech vaccine called as Comirnaty and the Moderna vaccine called as Spike Vax. And from this we can easily say that statement 1 is incorrect because in statement 1 it is given us COVID shield uses mRNA platform. So, by eliminating statement 1 from the options we can easily arrive at the correct answer which is option B. Now, other than this, on the same day, we have also seen that whole inactivated coronavirus vaccine includes Sinovac and Covaxin. From this, it is very clear that statement 3 is correct. And regarding statement 2, we have separately seen about Sputnik 5 vaccine on May 19th, 2021 analysis. We mentioned that Sputnik 5 is the world's first registered vaccine and it is a viral vector vaccine for COVID-19. This means that statement 2 is correct. So from this we know that different discussions have covered information related to this question. Now moving on to next question which is 44th question. See this question might seem big but it is actually very easy if you have listened to our discussion. Majorly the question is about WHO air quality guidelines. See we have discussed this in detail on our 23rd September 2021 Hindu news analysis. There we saw the prior short term and long term limits for the pollutants and then we saw the updated limits also and there we clearly mentioned that short term limit is for 24 hours. So the first statement is about short term as well as long term limits for particulate matter 2.5 shortly referred as PM 2.5. See, we have discussed about short term and long term limits for both PM 2.5 and PM 10 in 23rd September 2021 discussion. It was mentioned that the recommended long term limit is reduced to 5 micrograms per cubic meter for PM 2.5 and it is reduced to 15 micrograms per cubic meter for PM 10 levels. And similarly, the short term limits have also been reduced. It has been reduced to 15 for PM 2.5 level and 45 for PM 10 levels. So from this information, it is very clear that statement 1 is correct. We saw that the long term limit is 5 micrograms per cubic meter and short term limit is 15 micrograms per cubic meter for PM 2.5. And that is what is given in statement 1 also. So if we find out that statement 1 is correct then you can easily eliminate option C which does not have statement 1 in the option. Now on the same day we also saw the need for updated WHO air quality guidelines. While seeing that we mentioned the harmful effects of particulate matter that is PM 2.5 and PM 10. It was clearly said that both PM 2.5 and PM 10 they are capable of penetrating deep into the lungs and we saw that PM 2.5 is more dangerous as it can enter the bloodstream. So from this it is very clear that even though PM 10 can enter the lungs it cannot enter the bloodstream. This makes statement 3 as incorrect. So from this we can eliminate option A also because option A has statement 3 in it but just now we saw that statement 3 is incorrect. Now let us take the simple statement which is statement 4. This was also discussed many times whenever we saw about air pollutants and especially about ozone. For example, on 20th August 2021 discussion about smog towers, we saw that when ozone is close to the ground, it is bad for human health because ozone can damage lung tissue and can cause respiratory illness like asthma. And this makes it clear that ozone triggers asthma. So, statement 4 is correct and from this we can arrive at the correct answer which is option B. Now, after this let us go to question number 15. See, it talks about the exclusive powers of Lok Sabha. See, this is also a three statement question. We are going to try elimination technique. 
See on our May 7th 2022 analysis we had discussed about national emergency and in that we clearly mentioned that it has to be approved by both the house of the parliament that is both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So this makes statement 1 incorrect. If we find out that statement 1 is incorrect then we can eliminate options A and C because these two options have statement 1 in them. Now coming to statement 2, it says that Lok Sabha has exclusive power regarding passing a motion of no confidence against the Council of Ministers. See, on our 9th March 2022 analysis, specifically under prelims practice session, while discussing a statement, we clearly mentioned that no confidence motion can only be passed in Lok Sabha, which means it is an exclusive power of Lok Sabha. And if you find out that statement 2 is correct, then you can easily arrive at the correct answer which is option B. After this, let us take 66th question. See, it is regarding India's membership in various organizations. What are all the organizations given? The first one is Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. The second one is Missile Technology Control Regime. The third one is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. See, in our January 10th, 2022 analysis, we discussed that India is a member to Asian Infrastructure and Investment Bank. And on our May 14th, 2022 analysis, we saw that India is a member of Shanghai Cooperation Organization also. So from these two analysis, we can conclude that India is a member of both AIIB and Shanghai Cooperation Organization. So now check the options given. What are all the options that have both 1 and 3 in it? Only option D has both statement 1 and 3 in it. So from this we can easily conclude that the correct answer is option D, 1, 2 and 3. Now let us see 25th question. See it is a pair based question and fortunately it is not like other pair based questions where the options were only one pair is correct, only two pairs are correct etc. This question has options like any other question. So in this discussion, we can apply elimination technique using the facts learned in our discussion. Take the first pair here. What is given in the first pair? It is given as Namcha Barva, Garvil, Himalaya. See, we have seen about Namcha Barva in our discussions whenever we have learnt about Brahmaputra river. For example, take this discussion on 8th March 2021. We saw that in Tibet, Brahmaputra flows eastwards parallel to the Himalayas and then it reaches Namcha Barva mountain where it takes a U-turn and this U-turn is known as the Great Bend and then it enters India in Arunachal Pradesh through a gorge. So it is clear that Namcha Barva is in Tibet. Now let's come to the Garvel Himalayas part. See on November 2nd, 2021 analysis, we were discussing about Chardam Yatra. We saw that all the four temple shrines of Chardam are located in Garvel Himalayas range of Uttarkhand. So that means that Namcha Barva is neither in Garvel Himalayas nor in Uttarakhand. And this is why our first pair here is incorrect and from this you can easily eliminate options A and C. Now let us take the second pair. What is the second pair here? It is Nanda Devi and Kumaun Himalayas. See, on our February 10th, 2021 analysis, we saw about Uttarkhand. On that day, we saw that Nanda Devi is one of the high mountains in Uttarkhand. We also saw that Uttarkhand's entire area contains the ranges of Himadri, Himachal and the Shivaliks, which is broadly known as Kumaun Himalayas. So, it is clear that Nanda Devi is in Kumaun Himalaya. And if we find this, we can easily arrive at the option B which is the correct answer. Now moving on to next question which is 47th question. See, regarding this question we can approach in two ways. One is by knowing which is actually not a bird and the other is eliminating the birds in the options. Both these are possible if you have watched our analysis regularly. Now let us see the first way. Here we are going to look into 16th June 2020 Hindu news analysis. At that time when we discussed about Kaveri Basin, we also saw its biodiversity which includes the prominent fauna and flora. Particularly, Golden Maksir was mentioned. 
the faculty said that kaveri river ecology has abundance of fish species called golden magseer so it is clear that golden magseer is a fish and not a bird so the correct answer here is option a and this is one way now let us see the second way see we did not see about indian night jar directly but on 2nd march 2022 analysis we mentioned that in the bird survey great eared night jar was recorded we also displayed the image of this bird so from this you can come to the conclusion that night jar species is a bird species now you understand why we are displaying images of fauna and flora in our discussion see from this information we can eliminate option b and even before this discussion which happened on 3rd february 2022 we saw about asian water bird census and there we saw that water birds include ibis and spoonbill species so from this it is very clear that option c and option d are also birds so we can arrive at the correct answer which is option a Now let us take next question which is question number 12. See in this question the first statement is about advocates and the second statement is about bar council. See on our June 2nd 2020 analysis we have covered bar council of India and its roles. There we saw the bar council of India sets standards for legal education and grants recognition to universities whose degree in law will serve as qualification for enrollment as an advocate. So from this it is very clear that statement 2 is correct. If statement 2 is correct then we can eliminate options A and D. Then you have 50 percentage probability of attempting the question correctly. Now let us take this question which is question number 14. It is about ministers referred in Indian constitution. See in our 26th May 2019 analysis we clearly mentioned that the total number of ministers including the prime minister should not exceed 15 percentage of total members of Lok Sabha and this information makes the statement 2 correct if we find out that statement 2 is correct then we can eliminate options A and D and this gives you 50 percentage chance of attempting the question correctly Now moving on to the next question which is 46th question see this question is about polyethylene terephthalate see this element you would have commonly heard it as pet bottles or containers etc pet bottles now on our 24th march 2022 analysis we saw about plastic waste related audit report The report was Brand Audit Report 2021. Now in the practice question discussion session, we had a question on types of plastic wastes. And while discussing statement 1 in that question, which was about PET, that is polyethylene terephthalate, the faculty mentioned that pet containers can be recycled. And from this statement, it is very clear that the statement 3 is correct. So we can eliminate options B and C, which do not have statement 3 in it now we are left with options a and d and this gives us 50 50 chance of attempting this question correctly now let us see the 79th question see the question is about tea board in india it is a multiple statement question so we have to go through the statements let us see the most easiest one statement 1 the tea board is a statutory body See on our August 13 2020 analysis we discussed that the tea board is a statutory body under tea act 1953 so if we find out that statement 1 is correct using elimination technique we can eliminate the options b and c and this gives you 50 percentage probability of attempting the question correctly Now moving on to next question see this is the 84th question it is about solar installations see among the three statements that are given in the question we have seen about statement number 3 this is about india's largest floating solar photovoltaic project we discussed this on 11th march 2021 hindu news analysis and there we saw that largest floating solar project is being commissioned in telangana but the question here mentions it as goa so we can eliminate statement 3 from the options thereby eliminating options c and d so now we have two options left that is option a and b and this means that you have 50 percentage probability of attempting the question correctly now let us take up this next question which is the 98th question 
so it is about nanoparticles on 8th august 2021 analysis we had discussion about this topic on that day we saw that nanoparticle is a nanomaterial it includes the naturally occurring nanoparticles also such as volcanic ash sea spray and smoke see this shows that nanoparticles also occur naturally hence it is very clear that statement 1 is incorrect because in statement 1 it is given that nanoparticles do not exist in nature if we find that statement 1 is incorrect we can eliminate options a and c and this gives you 50% chance of attempting this question correctly and with this let us move on to the next question which is 40th question see in this question we are dealing with the solar storms see it asks about the possible effects of solar storms now if you see 6th february 2022 analysis we have covered solar storms in detail and in that analysis we have seen many effects of solar storms see we saw that they produce dazzling northern lights display in parts of atmosphere and they can also disrupt satellites and various forms of electronic communications then we saw that they can disrupt satellites and electrical power grids and in addition to this if you take 27th september 2020 discussion on aurora there we have explained how auroras are caused by the sun there we saw that solar wind and solar storms lead to auroras so from these points it is clear that statement 3 that is power grids could be damaged is correct and also statement 4 that is intense auroras could occur over much of earth and this statement is also correct if you see the options only two options have both the statement 3 and statement 4 what are those options those options are option c and option d So from this we arrive at a 50 percentage probability of attempting this question correctly. Now after this let us take the question number 78. Say it is about UN General Assembly and specifically it is about observer status. Look at the first statement. See the first statement is about the non-member states. Know that the first statement is correct. On our 18th May 2021 analysis we saw about India Palestine relations there we saw that in the year 2012 India co-sponsored and voted in favor of UNGA resolution that enabled Palestine to become a non-member observer state so from this it is very clear that observer status is provided to even non-member states Now coming to second statement it is about intergovernmental organizations and their observer status in our target series of the year 2020 we covered many topics particularly in january 2020 target video while discussing about shanghai cooperation organization the faculty noted that it has observer status at un general assembly since 2005 and we also saw that shanghai cooperation organization is an intergovernmental organization and this means that statement 2 is also correct now look at the options given see only two options that is option a and option d have both statement 1 and 2 in them and thus it gives you 50 percentage probability of attempting this question correctly now after this we are going to take 81st question see it is related to high and low clouds and their role in global warming See through our discussions we can get a 50% probability of arriving at the correct answer in this question. Let me tell you how. If you remember just a few days before prelims examination that is on 14th May 2022 analysis we discussed a previous year question on cirrus cloud thinning. And in that discussion we saw that cirrus cloud is a high cloud. This means that it is a high altitude cloud. See the question here is about high clouds and low clouds so here we can take cirrus cloud as an example of high altitude clouds on 14th may 2022 analysis our faculty said that cirrus clouds absorb more sunlight than they reflect so replacing cirrus clouds in the place of high clouds we can come to the conclusion that first half of the first statement which says that high clouds primarily reflect solar radiation is wrong because in the analysis we saw that cirrus clouds absorb more sunlight than they reflect if that statement is correct then the statement which is given in the question which says primarily 
it reflect the solar radiation is wrong then we also saw that they prevent long wave terrestrial radiation from escaping into space and after this the faculty mentioned in the audio that these clouds have a climate impact similar to greenhouse gases well this is the fact which is important for us see having impact like greenhouse gases means they trap heat and they warm the earth which in turn leads to global warming see we have discussed this aspect many a times for example on our 27th october 2021 discussion also we saw this see in the practice question our faculty explained about greenhouse gases while doing so the faculty mentioned that greenhouse gases result in global warming because they trap heat so from these two discussions it is very clear that cirrus clouds that is the high clouds they have an impact similar to greenhouse gases which is warming the globe but in the statement it is given us high clouds cool the surface of earth so the first statement is entirely wrong if we know that statement 1 is wrong then you can eliminate option a and c now you are left with two options which is option b and d and this gives you 50% chance of attempting the question correctly Now let us take this next question which is 28th question it is about monazite see if you remember we had a detailed discussion on this topic on 14th november 2021 we saw on that day that monazite contains 10 to 12 percentage of thorium dioxide so it is a major commercial source for thorium Additionally the same day we also saw that monazite is a mineral mainly containing rare earth elements and it contains 45 to 60 percentage of rare earth elements oxides now apart from this it was also concluded that monazite is the principal source of rare earths and thorium in india so from these statements it is clear that statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and then the same day we also saw that indian rare earth limited irel is the only entity which has been permitted to produce and process monazite and it is also the only entity which handles monazite for domestic use as well as for the export and we also saw that irel which is indian rare earths limited is wholly owned by government of india and it is under the administrative control of department of atomic energy so from this it is clear that a government entity is the one that is empowered to process and export monazite so this makes the statement for correct So from this you are left with two options option B and option D. See the problem is with third statement because on that same day we saw monazite occurs in the beach sand mineral along the coastal tracks but we did not say whether it occurs in the entire coastal track or not. Therefore in this question you have a 50 50 chance of attempting it correctly. But if you read the third statement again it has the term entire which is superlative see we know that generally a statement with the superlative word is often incorrect in prelims examination so using this logic you can eliminate statement 3 and arrive at the correct answer which is option b 1 2 1 4 only now let us take the next question which is 43rd question in set a the question is related to one of the significance of wetlands and what is the significance that they are talking about it is the wetlands function as kidneys of earth if you remember our 7th february 2022 analysis while discussing about bazai wetlands we saw the general significance of wetlands there it was mentioned that wetlands are kidneys of earth because they clean the environment of pollutants now if you look in the question there is no mention of the term pollutant but if you observe carefully we have heavy metals absorption and this is mentioned in option d here you have to recollect our other discussion that happened on 27th july 2021 there we saw in detail about heavy metals we also saw heavy metal pollution and in that analysis it was mentioned by the faculty that mainly these heavy metals acts as pollutants because they localize and they lie dormant for some time so from this it is very clear that heavy metals are pollutants so this is how you have to make connection from what you have learnt so from these two discussions it is clear that 
wetlands or kidneys of earth because they clean the environment of pollutants and we saw that heavy metals are also pollutants and option d is the closest option that we can get and hence you could have chosen option d as the right answer and with this we have come to the end of discussing prelims questions of the year 2022 which reflected from the hindu news analysis program of shankar ais academy i hope you understand the importance of current affairs and you start preparing for it regularly and with this we have come to the end if you find the video useful like share and comment and do subscribe to shankar ais academy's youtube channel for further updates thank you